Where the apple lies, the most cringiest episode I've ever seen. Amber is a little annoyed at me because it took me two hours to watch the episode. <laughs> it's 22 minutes without commercials. A half hour including pausing and research should be enough. <laughs> uh, I just don't like episodes where people lie and get caught in it. Oh well. Hello, I'm Lux. And I'm Ember. And this is our thoughts on My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic, Season 6, Episode 23, Where the Apple Lies. Oh my god, I didn't realize how much time I took up watching it until she pointed out how long it took. <sighs> but yeah, I'm not a big fan of the Liar Gets Caught episodes, even though this one she um, eventually broke down herself and told everyone that she lied. It's just that something about this episode really triggered my response of pause. I need to do something else for a little bit. Come back. Watch. Pause. Also, almost, it was almost like, watch for two seconds. Pause. And pause. Watch for two more seconds. Pause. <laughs> is basically what I was doing the entire time. That's not saying this is a bad episode. It was actually a pretty good episode. And it had a lot of background information on Ponyville in the past, which told us a lot more about the history of the town. And even more about the history of how the Apple family and the Rich family work together. Yes, because we didn't just have the one story of how Zap Apple Jam was one of the first items carried in Stinky Rich's store. We had more of the continuing relationship and ongoing into the next generation with Filthy and Applejack and Big Mac. And we finally got the name of his snooty, I so don't like her wife. Who names their child? Spoiled Milk. Yeah, she actually paused the episode and goes, did I hear the name correctly? It's Spoiled Milk. I thought I heard that wrong. <laughs> I was hoping I heard that wrong. Spoiled Milk. Spoiled Milk. No wonder she's so angry. Her parents gave her a terrible name. <laughs> the question is, why didn't she change it? Or work really hard at getting a nickname? Apparently that is a totally acceptable name in pony culture. Apparently. Uh, I'm surprised she wasn't named Spoiled Rotten. <laughs> I guess that's her sister or brother. <laughs> Possibly one of her parents. I was just about to say that. Yeah, there was just a lot of neat background slash foreground stuff going on in this episode. Like the um, great thing of Cheerly in that one outfit she wore in the Cutie Mark episode way back when. And I think it was the first season? Way back when, and yeah, it also gave us more of a distinction of the relative ages with Cheerilee, Big Mac, and Applejack. People think she's 18 in this episode. You know, she's all kind of gangly and long and... Mm-hmm. Kind of in that awkward stage. Mm-hmm. It was nice to see them, you know, put some effort into making everyone look younger. Because it wasn't just the siblings, it was also Granny Smith. Mm -hmm. And Rich and... Spoiled Milk, and Cheerilee, and Derpy, and everybody. Yeah, Derpy was in the episode in a, surprisingly, a foreground shot. She apparently went through some eye surgery. <laughs> or was recovering from an accident involving her eyes. Uh, th there were a few things that apparently I saw that Lux didn't. As we both saw Derpy, we both saw Cheerilee. But there was a unicorn in the foreground who looked like he had an accident involving his horn. Yeah, she paused in the head, go, go for a look at this. Wow, poor guy. Because <laughs> I was so totally focused on Applejack during the entire episode that I missed 90% of the background and foreground stuff until I went back looking, doing research on it and I saw all this stuff people were pointing out in the episode. Though speaking of things people were pointing out in episodes, Amber pointed out something that I haven't seen a screenshot of yet. Yes, the creepy twin Pegasus girls just staring straight at you. I do not do creepy. <laughs> uh, you also do not do doctors either. Yeah, so you make it creepy enough that we're in a hospital, and then you put those twins there. Well, we got to the surgery theater part, she goes, well, this is the part where I'm going to pause it. <laughs> I bet you really cringed a lot when, whoop, time to saw it off. <laughs> like, you do realize that that is a pony's leg, not a tree branch, right? I mean, your eyesight's not that bad. Well, I think she was saying that this is how you would treat it if it was a tree. Also, that actually is a type of saw 
even though it was a more stylized and cartoony, that they actually do use in surgery to cut through bone. Yes, I know that. That does not make it any less creepy. Mm -hmm. And yeah, those two are from, uh, it's not Psycho. We were thinking about that earlier. Um, it's that one where he goes, here's Johnny. Oh, it's from, isn't that The Shining? Yes, Shining. There's two twins in that that are in the hallways, and they look creepy holding hands with each other. Another famous creepy child from that is the son riding a tricycle through the hallways. That's when he runs into the two twins. I only know this because those scenes are like the most commonly used scenes other than him chopping through the door and going, Hi! Yeah, I don't know how I knew the twins because I don't do creepy. So apparently I've run across it somewhere, probably in an AMV. <laughs> she, she's about to play with the cats. This is why I laughed. C cat. Cat. Singular. <laughs> no, I'm just messing with the toy in a random repetitive gesture. The cat's all the way over there. She doesn't want to play. <laughs> okay. So it sounded like you had some nitpicks with uh, Big Mac helping out his sister. Well, he was continuing to perpetrate the lie. Why didn't he just rat her out to Granny from the very beginning? I can understand why he helped later on, because the farm was at risk. But in the very, very beginning, why wasn't he truthful? Also, I'm very um, happy for Big Mac's voice actor. This is probably the most he's ever gotten paid. <laughs> yeah, I was just about to say, it's like, wow, he talked a lot in this episode, and this is where he became silent, apparently. I'll listen more to people. Mm -hmm. I like how there were several times where he almost said, yep, but he didn't say yep until he was told to be quiet. Yep. <laughs> At the same time, it's like, that was going too far the other way. It's like, it's wonderful that you're a good listener, Big Mac, but you need to also communicate. You know, there's this little thing called reciprocity. What you put out is what you get back in communication. Hmm. So if you're being a good listener, then other people should be good at listening to you. But if you're not communicating, then they're not going to know what you're thinking. So it's kind of like he went too far the other way. Well, he does talk more when he needs to get across a point that's more than yes or no. Because there have been some episodes where he doesn't really talk much until the end of the episode where he needs to say the point. Or it's near the beginning of the episode where he needs to make a point. Yes, like apple bucking season. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't think he can handle this, sis. I can handle it! Why are there two Twilights? <laughs> <laughs> also, that's a common thing to actually put Twilight's crazy face from Lesson Zero in the Here's Johnny! <laughs> That would work surprisingly well. So, well, you go over more details in the episode, and I'll probably have more stuff come off the top of my head as we talk. Yes, uh, the spoiled milk just a little desperate that everyone acknowledge how awesome her fiancé is, and that she's made such an amazing match. Mm -hmm. I'm not quite sure by the way she acts if she comes from a rich family, an extremely rich family, or a non-rich family that's trying to become rich. I think she's more like underneath, you know, and she was marrying up. I think she's always been just close enough to prosperity that she's seen what true wealth is and knows she doesn't have it. Mm -hmm. Because she is desperate for everyone to acknowledge her status, social climber. Because it's like, look, here's my husband. Isn't he awesome? Look how rich he is. Look how rich he is. It's even in his name. Please call me Rich. <laughs> yes, going back to pony naming, filthy, stinky, etc. Why would you name your child that? Oh, I feel sorry for ponies. It's like, it's like the Apple family has the most normal names. When I mean by normal, is they're not names you can really make fun of, per se. Apple Jack, Apple Cider, Apple this, Apple that, Tart, this, this. It's... it's... <laughs> Tart, it, tart is workable. Trust me, I can make fun of that. <laughs> yeah, the moment I said tart, it, it my brain immediately went to all the bad things that tart means. Mm -hmm. Usually associated with females. Mm -hmm. uh, not to go into any of those. <sighs> you know, because there's this thing called Google and the internet. It does it for me. <laughs> uh, let's see. What else was there? That we got more information on why... Rich would be so upset that, please, 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 don't let Granny think I was trying to take the cider. Oh, speaking of that, 
that makes me wonder, why don't they use the zap apple jars for the cider? Because apparently the zap apple jars preserve the zap apple. Wouldn't it do the same for the cider? Yes, but the cider goes in barrels, which if it's anything like winemaking, the barrel and the seasoning from the barrel is part of the fermentation process and the curing process. So once they open the barrel, it starts to decay. So they would have to turn around and put them all in individual sized barrels to make that work. Or they could let it season in the barrel for a couple of hours because it sounds like it spoils pretty quickly. Because Granny Smith, I don't know if she was exaggerating or not, says it goes bad the moment you start pressing it. So after it's gone through the press, you have to sell it now or within a couple of hours or it's done. This is why there's a giant line and why there's only so much cider to go around each day because they make it fresh that day. Which really makes it more like apple juice as opposed to cider. Mm -hmm. And if I was them, I would set the barrel aside, let it do its thing for a couple hours, then just put, start putting it into the jars so you have some to sell for later. But if the jam jars work anything like normal canning, the jars have to be heated in order to get the seal, mm. which would heat up the cider and could compromise the flavor and or the stability. Mm. Good point. What they really need, if it can be done in the MLP universe, is more like a soda bottle, you know, the old school glass ones where you could have a individual bottle and a separate seal that I don't think required a heat process. Mm. That's a good point, and it would make it so they could make more money off the cider over a longer term instead of having it all have to be put on that one set of days where they make the cider every day. You'd also have a probably less of a workload on the Apple family, considering there seems to be only, at this point, three working people on there who can do the heavy lifting and the heavy processing. Yeah, because I don't think Granny Smith can do much anymore other than the... Um, she can do plenty of the management stuff and yeah. plenty of cooking, but not heavy lifting hard labor. Like Applejack and Big Mac can do, and now Apple Bloom. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, it seems like the money's never enough because they're always going, we have to sell this or, you know, the farm's in danger. It's like, how poor of management is this? You know your selling cycle, you know your big products, you know when they're going to be sold, you know how much you're going to charge, you know what the average demand is. So how is it always a crisis every year? Mm -hmm. Other than plot convenience, because it, you would think they would have year-round products with the apples. You know, store some for later, ferment some hard cider, you know, all this other stuff. They could just apple pies and refrigeration and ask a unicorn to come up with something to preserve them you know they have plenty of unicorn friends ask them to come and do something to help them preserve stuff to have a longer selling product yes but that would be non-traditional so that part probably wouldn't help or i should say probably wouldn't happen but we have seen them sell other apple products because remember when apple bloom took the cart through the dangerous route and ran into that chimera i believe they were carrying pies also, they've done other baked goods for different events, like when Applejack took all those Apple products to the gala the first year. That's another thing I wanted to bring up during the whole um, part where Granny was talking about how there's a difference between cider and zap apple. Once again, it sounds like it's more about tradition than actually figuring out a better way to sell the product. And they're arguing about tradition. Tradition is great and everything, but traditions are based around things you do because you have to. But we have developed things to change what, how we do things for the better. A tradition is there to actually teach the way you should do something until that's out of date. Yes, because there was always a reason that a tradition started. The question is whether or not that reason is still valid. Uh, my favorite example is one that a story that one of my college instructors would tell about how a mother and daughter were cooking together and the mother cut both ends of, I believe it was a ham, off before putting it in the pan. And the daughter asked why. Mom goes, I don't know, this is how my mom did it. Call up the mom. Oh, no, that's how your grandmother did it. Fortunate enough that the grandmother, which would be the great-grandmother to the little girl, was still around. They asked her, she goes, well, I don't know why you do it. I did it because it would fit in the pan. <laughs> Bigger pan, you don't have to do it anymore. Though you could actually cut off the ends, depending on how much you're cutting off, and stick some stuff on the side to help it get more juice or flavor or... Yes. The thing is they were doing something without knowing, knowing a reason. 
and it turned out that there was not a valid reason for them to be doing the procedure, yep. which is where, you know, exploring traditions and the history and why did something start and is it still relevant is mm -hmm. so important. You know, not every new idea is a good one, but just because it's new also doesn't mean it's bad. Yeah. Huh. Yeah, like I said, I, re I really want to go over that process. Like, I was thinking about this, like, but you have a technology here you might be able to use for the cider and increase your selling time where you can sell more cider, make more money, have less stress, and still be traditional because you could still sell a majority of your cider on the day where everyone lines up. But for those people who miss it, they can go to riches because how I would actually do it is I would do the tradition of everyone buying it on that day. And once that week or whatever is over, cider week is over, you then take the leftovers and preserve them and have filthy sell it during the rest of the year. Yeah, it doesn't sound like there's any leftovers, though, because they press as much as they can during this week because they don't preserve it. So would you then have ponies being upset that they couldn't get their cider because some was actually being held back and they weren't processing all of the available cider apples? Hmm. Though there was that one year because of the contest where they had way extra cider. Yeah, and so Rainbow Dash finally got hers. <laughs> mm -hmm. But yeah, going back to my whole thing about, ugh, <laughs> there's just certain styles of episodes that make me pause and cringe. That doesn't make them bad episodes, mind you. That just makes it so it's an uncomfortable episode for me to watch. But sometimes that can actually make it a bad episode. This is not one of them, though. I really enjoyed this episode when I was actually watching it. <laughs> oh, any particular good points that caught your eye? Well, it was great in the world building for the history of Ponyville. Also, the overall lesson wasn't so much of don't lie. It was nobody's perfect and you need to allow yourself time to grow and learn from those mistakes. Also, pay attention and learn from the mistakes of others so you don't make them. Mm -hmm. Also, Granny Smith runs the farm. <laughs> As if that wasn't obvious. <laughs> How did Apple Bloom live her life at the farm and not know this? Also, when Granny Smith does retire, I have a feeling it's going to be Applejack and Big Mac running the farm. Yeah, it's not going to go just to one person. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure Filthy Rich is an only child. Mm -hmm. So, shall we wrap things up? I think so. Oh, well, as I said before, I really did enjoy the episode as a whole when I actually got a chance to watch the parts that I did watch. And because what I actually did when I first watched it, since I was pausing so much, okay, I want to just skip over most of this episode and get to the end, watch the end, because that usually helps me watch the rest of it. <laughs> so I skipped to the end, watched the end, and then I jumped back to the spot where I last paused, and I watched the rest of it. So it's a good episode. There's also great world building going on. I really enjoy the dynamic between young Big Mac and young Applejack. I really like how we started the episode with Apple Bloom lying at first, and then quickly wrapping that up so we can get to the main story. And I love all the little details that were going on. It was a good episode. Nice episode. I don't have as much trouble with this type as Lux does, so less pausing. It's still not my favorite type, but we had some great world building, great lessons, and a lot of stuff going on in the foreground and background that wasn't directly related to the story. So call that eye candy, if you will. And there was really a lot that to be gained from the episode for something that was basically a flashback episode. Well, I hope you enjoyed our thoughts on My Little Pony. Friendship is Magic, Season 6, Episode 23, Where the Apple Lies. And if you want some fresh off the presses art, you can go to my Patreon and donate some money so I have more time to draw art, like the art you see on screen. I chose to draw Teenage Applejack because I thought she was cute as heck. Well, I was going to say that it's no lie that we have a subscribe button. So please, hover your mouse over the subscribe button either on screen or below and click to subscribe for some more wonderful art and our wonderful thoughts. Or you can just mute the video and watch the art or go to my DeviantArt or my Patreon or my Tumblr. Also, if you don't have any of those services, you can also go to Twitter. I'll put that on the screen or in the link somewhere. Thank you for watching. <laughs>